Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Brendan Lantry, Chairman of the Staten Island Republican Party. Yeah. And he is ready to elect Nicole Maliotakis, our next Congresswoman. Yeah. Nicole truly is the law and order candidate in this race. Uh, this is a great rally, but this is also a day of action. So I just wanted to get up and take a quick moment with Taylor. Taylor, where's Taylor? Taylor's right here. Taylor is Nicole's field, uh, field organizer. We're all going to be collectively getting out there today, hitting the streets, spreading the message as to why people need to vote for Nicole, vote for our Republican ticket, vote for our law enforcement ticket, pro-law and order ticket this November 3rd. So please see Taylor after the program uh, uh, as well. I also just want to acknowledge, before we turn it over to our MC, uh, a couple of my colleagues in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Chairman Jerry Kassar. Where's Chairman Jerry Kassar? Chairman of the New York State Conservative Party. And, uh, and Chairman Dave Curcio, Chairman of the Staten Conservative Party. Yeah. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to our MC for the event, our South Shore Councilman Joe Borelli. I thought he was just going to say Joe Borelli, and, and I'd give you the better Joe Borelli, this, this guy right here. He's, Chuck, he's, he's far better than me. Uh, if, if you all wouldn't mind beginning with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you all would take off your hats and uh, join me. Joe, you want to do the pledge? You want to say the Pledge of Allegiance? All right. Wait, wait. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag United States of America, to the Republic for its Now I will ask you all, uh, in honor of the passing of one of our Supreme Court justices, if we'd all just give a moment of silence for the memory of uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, and welcome to Republican Headquarters. Republican headquarters, by the way, is the headquarters of the party that supports law enforcement, the party that respects our police, the party that doesn't defund the police, the party that actually has some police officers who feel comfortable voting for it. I don't want to speak to you too rah-rah and, and motivated because I have nothing, nothing really that good to say. Unfortunately, uh, as Churchill said, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. I have nothing to offer but bad news about the city of New York and it's unfortunate. I want to talk to you really quick about the most dangerous thing in New York City and in urban cities around the country. It's not gang violence, it's not drugs, it's not illegal guns, it's not gun violence, it's not murderers, it's not rapists, it's not any of those things. What it is is, well I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a comparison. Fire is pretty dangerous, right? Fire, fire is dangerous. Fires have killed, in our 394 year history as a city, fires have killed thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers. They probably killed millions of city dwellers all around the world, but fires aren't the most dangerous thing in our cities because we have the greatest fire department here in the world. They have the most and best equipment of any fire department in the world. They have the best training of any fire department in the world. When firefighters go in to fight a fire, they know that their teammates, their equipment, their helmet, their hoses are all top notch. And they can go into a fire with the courage and confidence to get the job done. We even have laws. We have laws that made New York City safer and buildings safer. We have building codes. Right? We don't live in tenements. You're not really at risk of dying in some crowded tenement fire. So we've taken something that's really dangerous, and because of the decisions we made as a society, we've made New York City and we make all cities around the country safer. Fire used to be a threat like this, and now it's like this. So go back to what I first said. Gun violence, gang violence, drugs, illegal weapons, murderers. Those aren't the most dangerous things in the city. Those are really dangerous things. But the most dangerous thing in the city of New York are democratic politicians 
in the majority of legislatures in the city, in the state, and at the federal level. Why do I say that? Because just like the fires, we know how to solve it. You get a bunch of people, you train them really hard, you give them top-notch equipment, you support them. You make laws to support them in doing their job. Fire is no longer a danger. We know how to address rising crime. We did it in the past. We know how to address gang violence. We know how to stop people from still, sitting on a street corner selling drugs. We know how to stop those drug dealers from involving themselves in gang wars between themselves that end up with innocent kids, one-year-old kids getting shot. But it's Democratic politicians, right? Name names, it's them. It's not Republicans. It's Democratic politicians in the majorities of legislatures that are making the rules that prevent, not firefighters in this case, but police officers and law enforcement from doing the job they need to do to take violence from a threat like this and once again make it a threat like this. So let's look at the anatomy of the current situation we're in. We had bail reform. Again, Democratic majorities in Albany passed that. We had a Republican majority in the state Senate. The voters chose not to have that anymore. The result was bail reform. People that many of you locked up doing your jobs were released not because of anything you did, but because something Democrat politicians did. They're out on the streets because of Democratic politicians. The mayor, I don't know if you heard of this guy, the mayor of New York City touted that Rikers Island has the lowest population since World War II. Well, bravo. That'd be a wonderful thing to tout if it didn't correspond with, number one, a rising crime on our streets, and number two, more violence against the good guys, our correction officers, in jail. Only on planet nonsense would someone tout a lower jail population while more people who should be in jail are out on our streets. Then you look at the city council. The city council, defund the police. We're gonna defund the police. We asked our budget staffers at the council, how did you guys come up with a million dollars, a billion dollars? And our own budget staffers said, we don't, we don't know. You guys, the politicians gave us a number and said, try to work it out into some policy. God bless our staffers, at least they were honest. Where did the billion dollars come from? Everyone get out your Google machines and try to figure out where billion dollar, a billion dollars came from. The truth is, it came from thin air. It came from the internet. Democrats made of something people tweeted. A hashtag, defund the police. They were afraid of it. And a lot of people tweeted it. And Democratic politicians allowed crazy people on the internet, maybe some of you guys are crazy people on the internet too, but Democratic politicians let crazy people on the internet cut a billion dollars from a public safety agency. It wasn't Republicans. It was Democrats. Why did they do it? They don't know. They have no idea. The hashtag told them to do so. So now we have a lower headcount and we're seeing the ramifications. The same city council said we are going to ban the compression of diaphragms. We're going to call it a chokehold bill. Maybe we'll ban chokeholds, okay. But we're going to also ban and criminalize the compression of someone's diaphragm. Friends, if the compression of someone's diaphragm was so dangerous, the high school wrestling mats down the block over here at Farrell would be a bloodbath. The karate school your kids go to would be a massacre scene because compressing someone's diaphragm isn't dangerous. But they're criminalizing your actions. They're criminalizing your proper response to people who don't want to be handcuffed because Democratic politicians think they know better. I challenge the mayor, put cuffs on me. You got a foot on me. Put cuffs on me without compressing my diaphragm. It can't be done. But these democratic politicians govern not by logic and reason, but by craziness and whatever the leftist mob tells them to do. I spoke to my colleagues. They couldn't tell me why they wanted to fund the police. Their answer was, blankly, we don't want to get a democratic primary in our next election. I don't blame them. They probably would lose. 
They're not, they're not wrong on that. But this is how and why we can't let Democratic majorities become entrenched in any legislative system. So we have to elect someone like Nicole Maliotakis right here. We have to elect her here in New York 11. Somewhere in Pennsylvania 6, they got to elect that person. Somewhere in Utah 2nd District, they got to elect that person. In the U.S. Senate, they got to elect the person in California. They got to elect the person in Colorado. But we can't let what's happening here because of Democratic majorities happen to this entire country. That's your call to action. Don't let it happen. You may not agree with everything Nicole says. You don't have to. But when it comes to supporting law enforcement, I know that she's not going to be shaken by literally what someone puts in a Twitter hashtag and resents. That's not courage. That's cowardice. That's not good policy. That's bullshit. Nicole's not going to fall for that stuff. And by the way, I want to shout out Mike Tenusis. Where are you, Mike? We're going to have you speak in a second, but in the State Assembly to replace Nicole Maliotakis here in this area is Mike Tenusis. He also has the support of all the law enforcement unions. So while you're out there talking about Nicole, make sure you talk about Tenusis. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry to go on my depressing rant, but I wanted to give you a real accounting of why things are happening and why they're not going in the right direction. And why, wherever you are in this country, wherever you're listening, you need to vote for Republicans at every level of government. Now, one Republican who was recently elected and who has always stood on the side of law enforcement is a former law enforcement officer himself. And he will be our next speaker, and that is Michael Riley. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everybody, for coming out and supporting Nicole Maliotakis and supporting all our candidates that back law enforcement. You backing us helps us truly back you and your families. Joe hit it on the head. Democratic policies are destroying our city and our state. They don't have our back. I've tried to warn them several times when I debated bills that involve law enforcement. I told them what's on this paper does not transition to the street the way it should. They're kowtowing to the mob. Joe said, it's a hashtag. They're doing what the mob wants, not what the people of New York State want. 4,000 people, I got an estimate of, that were out protesting, which turned into rioting, which turned into looting. That's what they changed for. That's unacceptable. That's why we have to send people like Nicole to Washington, Mike Tenusis to Albany, to help me, to help me get our message out and to stop the radical Democrats. Because that's who's destroying our communities. Unlike many members in the state legislature, I wore this uniform. I put that shield on. I strapped that gun belt on. And I had to make some difficult decisions. Decisions that they could not make if their life depended on it. Why? Because they're nothing but flappers. You walk the walk, you talk the talk, you do the job. The example is, I heard all over Twitter with hashtags that the NYPD was on a slowdown. Slow down my ass. There are guns being taken off the street every day by members in uniform. Unfortunately, it took away the anti-crime unit. A unit that I fortunately was able to be in in all three ranks, walking around, getting guns off the street. But that's a testament to who you are and your character. Because the active duty police officers are in uniform out there taking guns off the street, making those arrests. Those detectives are doing those investigations. Why? Because you are professionals. And you will always be professionals. And that's why we have your back. So once again, make sure you get out there, vote for Nicole, and vote for Michael. We need them. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Ray.
So it, it's always, after you've been doing this political stuff for a while, it's always really fun to put people who are new on the spot. Uh, so Mike Tanousis, who did not think he was going to speak, I'm going to embarrass him a little bit. Uh, but I think he's got something great to say because I know he's on the right side of every issue. A candidate for the 64th Assembly District, uh, the East Shore and of Brooklyn, Michael Tanousis. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Michael Tanousis, and I'm the Republican and conservative candidate for the 64th Assembly District for Nicole's seat. I was a prosecutor for eight years, and for eight years, I worked hand-in-hand with the men and women of the New York City Police Department to keep the streets safe and to put violent criminals behind bars. When they passed the bail reform is when I saw the writing on the wall and I realized that life as a prosecutor and life as a New York City police officer was never gonna be the same. I can tell you this, I ran a primary in June, I'm running in the general election in November. I've been going door to door for the past few months and I see more for sale signs than I've ever seen before. I have constituents telling me that if they stay, if their house is not sold by November, they will vote for me. If not, they're leaving and good luck. That's what they told me. Make no mistake, we're in a war. We are in an ideological war and the stakes are high. This is gonna be the difference as to whether I am able to raise my kids here and you are able to live here and see your grandkids and your kids and your families and whether we'll be moving out of state. So God bless you, God bless the NYPD. This is the time to work. November 3rd is the day, let your voices be heard. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and uh, now we'll, we'll go through some of our union leaders who have pledged their support for Nicole, and uh, I just want to urge all their members to, to really back them up on this one. Every vote will count. Your spouse, your kids, your mom and dad, all the votes that you can get, uh, please help support your union, support Nicole. First, we'll start with Dan Torelli, the uh, NYPD PBA Recording Secretary. Thank you, Joe. I want to thank everyone for coming out today on a Saturday to show your support for some uh, for Nicole. Just a sh few short weeks ago, outside one police plaza, the PBA made an endorsement of Nicole. We have a process at the PBA, very lengthy. We don't just take it for granted that they want our backing because they're uh, pro-police. This was an easy endorsement. Like our other unions, it's a long process and it was an easy endorsement and we're proud that we did. And we're proud to be here today. Like was said earlier by Joe, what we're going through now in my 37 years as a police officer, I can't even believe what I'm seeing. When you used to come out and you say to your police officers, you say, listen, be careful. God forbid you get hurt and God forbid the worst. But now we have to say, and please, try not to get arrested. That's unconscionable. How could that even be? These Democrats have to be voted out and we need people like Nicole to fix what's wrong. People are leaving in droves. The people are now not coming back. Percentages are saying 44% of the people that have left are saying that they will not come back. We have to change that by electing Nicole and all the other Republicans to make sure that we do the right thing so we bring the city back to where it was. Where we fought for years in NYPD when it was bad years ago and we fought to get it back and we finally got it back and we're not going to let it go, go by the wayside. So everybody coming out here today is very important to show your support, but that's not enough. You have to make sure that your friends and family actually do vote. So it's your job, not just to come here and show us support, but it's your job to make sure that you vote and friends and family vote, because that's how we change things. And it's our honor to be here today and endorse it publicly again, Nicole Malathiakis. Thank you, Dan. And uh, uh, the next guy uh, I want to uh, just introduce is is someone who really understands the personal nature of politics. Whenever I speak to a, uh, a city council member, not the crazy ones, but there are some moderates out there. Uh, whenever I speak to a moderate, you know, and I ask them, like, "Who have you spoken to?" Uh, and almost nine times out of ten, it's it's this guy, the DEA president, Paul DiGiacomo, who I really want to commend publicly for taking the time and often the hard task 
of actually having to, and I, I know this, I don't want to scare any of you people, actually speaking to some city council members, uh, which is not a fun thing, I assure you, when you represent a police union. So please give a, a big round of applause to Mr. Paul Giacomo. Thank you, Joe. Nicole, it's truly an honor to be here today uh, to support Nicole Malatakis for Congress. You know, and I want to thank my brother and sister unions out here today for their support and working in unity, because in unity, there's strength. That's what unionism is all about. And now is the time we have to get out there and show our unity and get out there and get the right people into office that are going to support the police and to support law and order. Back to blue. Back to blue and get our members out, registered to vote, and get out and vote. Because if you're not registered to vote, you can't vote. That means your children in college, that means your friends, and that means your family. The DEA represents over 20,000 active and retired New York City detectives. And we will be working vigorously to get the right people in office on November 3rd. We will be out there, pushing our members, their families, their children in college to get the vote out. You know, at a time when it's not popular to support the police, there's one person that always has, Nicole Malatakis. She stood by us in good times and in bad. And now we have to stand by her and make sure she gets elected. You know, when you look to your left, you have the mayor on a local level no support. You have the city council, other than two people, Steve Matteo and Joe Borelli, the rest of them, no support. You look to your right, you have the governor of this great state that created all these bail reforms and let all these criminals out of jail again. No support for the police, zero support. The assembly and the senate have very few people that support the police. I've never seen anything like this in 38 years of policing. And you look up, and you look to the federal government, and you have the President of the United States supporting the police on a regular basis and being beat up for it on a regular basis. So we have to get the right people in office. We have to get out there and vote for President Trump. He's the only one that's supporting the police. We have to get out there and we have to vote for Nicole Malatakis to support the police. These people put a false narrative out there every day. These criminals that are let out, we've made over 400 gun arrests in the last week and a half in the New York City Police Department. Only 112 have been kept in jail. And th those people that were kept in jail were mostly because they were flight risks. So the criminal justice system is not working because of the laws that were enacted by this governor, by this mayor, and by this city council. And we have to vote them out. So let's make America great again, and let's make the police great again. Let's vote for Nicole Malatakis. Thank you. Uh, next, I want to call up our brothers in the Port Authority. Sorry. Uh, the first vice chair of the Port Authority PBA, Mr. Frank Conti. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Um, as uh, Joe said, I'm Frank Conti. I'm the vice president of Port Authority PBA. On behalf of our membership, uh, our executive board, and our PBA members, uh, a good amount of who are here today. Uh, we are happy, we're very proud and privileged to support Nicole Maliotakis in her run for Congress. Uh, this is a very easily earned endorsement uh, for us. Uh, we know that Nicole stands in support of the law enforcement professionals who go out there and do a good job in our communities every day. Every day. People that enter this profession to do just that. Uh, unfortunately, there are some elected officials out there who are partaking in the vilification of the very people who go out there every day for the purpose of keeping our community safe. And um, 
I think it's quite clear uh, if you turn your back on the law enforcement professionals who are out there working on a daily basis, you are turning your back on the residents, the law-abiding people in your communities that put you in office in the first place. Uh, so uh, we know that N Nicole stands for law enforcement. We know that she stands side by side with us, and we do the same for Nicole in her run for Congress. So uh, let's get everybody out there to vote and to support her. Thank you. Before I go down the list, I, I see some Lieutenant's Benevolent Association polos in the crowd. Now, they're not on my list to speak, and I want to make sure this is like a wedding. Um, if, you, if, if you guys would like to speak, if that's okay. If not, I just want to sh shout out the Lieutenant's Benevolent Association for supporting Nicole Malley Attacker. So give them a big round of applause. Uh, next, you know, it, it's funny because originally on my list, I had a different speaker. And now he, he's a friend of mine, and he's telling me he's, he doesn't know he's going to speak today. He had no idea he was going to speak today. Uh, but he, he shows up in his best suit. I mean, Spencer Garris right there. Shows up in his best suit, his most perfect tie, a tie clip. He's got wingtip shoes on. Wingtip shoes on. And he's, oh, I don't know if I'm going to speak today. But then he got outranked, thankfully. So he got his wish. He got his wish. So, uh, you know, obviously one of the most vocal and, and uh, unions who have been out there beating the message, the pro-law enforcement message, is the Sergeant's Benevolent Association. And here with us today is the Vice President, uh, Vincent Vallelong. Thanks. And Spencer, you can go home now for, for showing me up. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't have to tell everybody in this audience, you know, how much we love this job. There's a, there's a lot of city workers that are out here. There's families, community members. You know, we're all one. And today is Nicole's day. So I just want everybody here to know one thing. Never forget. It's a mantra in the police department that's been around for a long time. We never have forgotten since 9-11. Everyone that's come before us that's passed, all our heroes that have come before us, no matter if they're firemen or if they're, or if they're cops, there's one individual and a, and a bunch of individuals up in Congress that have forgotten. Max Rose is one of them. I have not seen Max Rose at any family functions on Staten Island, any family picnics that the SBA has had in the past throughout the years. The only person that the SBA has seen throughout the years is this woman that's standing behind me right now. The woman who should be put in office next and take Max Rose out. Right? Max Rose sits up there and makes these commercials and calls her a liar. But, to, but till today, I still don't know who Max Rose is. Max Rose claims that he fought, he went up there and he went against Pelosi, he went up against the Democratic Party. It's all the same old. Nothing has changed with that individual. Nothing will, will change with him if he's voted back in again. So everybody needs to take this message to the streets. And we need to put Nicole in office. We need to change things. Because there's kids out here, and that's what we do our job for. That's what we go to work for every single day, is for our children. All right? And if our children are not put first, and we let these people take over our politics and destroy what our, what our family values are, then what are we worth? So we deserve a better person in office, and Nicole is that person. And a matter of fact, we demand it. So I want to thank everybody here, and I want to thank Nicole, and I want to thank Joe all right, for having us out here, and God bless everybody. Our final uh, speaker is a guy I'm very jealous of. I mean, he, he is looking good. He, he has slimmed down. I mean, how, God bless. Uh, a good friend of mine, a Staten Islander, uh, the uh, Captain's Endowment Association president, Mr. Chris Monahan. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks, Joe. Um, I'm actually closing on Police Academy way 30 years ago, so not too bad. I so I put on my old gym shirt. Uh, good news about being last is I really don't have much to say because each and every speaker here touched on the point, and uh, on every point, and they can't be any more accurate. I think one of the biggest points is people are leaving the city, and it's quality of life and crime. And we can't have that. I'm born and raised in Staten Island. I want my kids to live on Staten Island. I want my grandkids to live on Staten Island. But it keeps going this trend. Even my 17-year-old said, what's, what's here for me? We went to Colorado for the summer. So, you know, it's trimming down and, and it's scary. 
Um, and the message is, don't support the police to our politicians right now. But I can tell you, years working with uh, Nicole up in Albany, we've been together for a long time working on things, she's always supported the police. She always says, I support the police. And I know down in Washington, she'll say, I support the police. And others on the other side, they jump over the aisle. And they're going to wash them, try to wash them out with soap. Because support the police right now is a dirty word. It's profanity. And we need to change that. And the only way we change that is we vote people in like Nicole, who's not going to be afraid to stand up to people down in Washington, as she did up in Albany, and say, I support the police. I support the police. I don't support defunding the police. A billion dollars. Loss of manpower. No police economy classes going in. Closing Rikers. Letting people out of jail. Well, Nicole, won't have, she had none of that up in Albany, and she certainly won't have any of that down in Washington, D.C. So I'm very proud to endorse Nicole for Congress, and I'm sure she's going to succeed. Thank you. Now, without further ado, uh, the woman whose name is on all the signs, the woman who's going to be the next uh, member of the Congress for the 11th New York District, someone I was pleased uh, to sit next to for three years in Albany and to share some uh, of our district currently uh, on the south shore of Staten Island, our next Congresswoman, Nicole Maliotakis. Councilman Borelli, he, he said it exactly right when he started his speech today. He laid it out exactly how it is. And that is why we are here today. I want to thank my good friend, my current colleague, Michael Riley, uh, and of course, not only his service in the Assembly, his service in education, um, and of course, his service in the NYPD, our chairman, party leaders, union leaders, and all of you who are here today. This election is so critically important. And by now, I know that you know it, I know the people of Staten Island know it, the people of Brooklyn know it, the people of New York City know it, and the people of the United States of America know it. It is truly a defining moment of where are we going to take this nation, this wonderful nation that my parents came to as poor immigrants who didn't speak the language, came alone to seek the American dream. Are we going to be a nation where we preserve the American dream, its limitless opportunity, its limitless potential, its greatness, its freedoms, its liberties? Or are we going to move down the path of socialism? That is really what is on the ballot in November. And under that, we're talking about important issues of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, public safety, ensuring that we have a strong economy, we preserve job creators, we help them thrive, we help people who want to be entrepreneurs, we don't destroy capitalism and destroy jobs and push us towards socialism. Talking about holding our mayor accountable, ensuring that someone from New York City is on the federal level that actually holds Mayor de Blasio accountable. Remember, there is federal oversight. And right now, we have a mayor who is misspending tax dollars, including precious federal monies that come for education, for public safety, for housing. And no one is saying a word in our congressional delegation. But today, we are really truly here to talk about what I believe has emerged as the number one issue in this campaign, and that is law and order and public safety. We have seen unbelievable things taking place throughout the nation. We're seeing these riots. We're seeing lawlessness, chaos, anarchy, looting. Here in New York City, the media hasn't done a good job of covering it, honestly. But we, just a couple of weeks ago, we continue to have major issues of looters, people breaking store windows, of people creating chaos in the streets. 
And our mayor, our elected officials hardly say a word about it. They want to ignore what's happening in our city. Shootings. Doesn't matter if you're talking about New York City, if you're talking about just Southern Brooklyn, if you're talking about Staten Island. In fact, I just checked the stats. They have doubled, more than doubled, in the past year compared to last year. In this congressional district, five people shot dead in just a week, last week. Five people. And this was considered one of the safest congressional districts, of course, not only in the city, but in the state. And it's something that has sent shockwaves from Tottenville to where we are today, to the North Shore, to Brooklyn, Bay Ridge, Diker Heights, Graves, and it doesn't matter which community. Everyone in this city wants to be safe. They want to be able to raise their children in a community where they will not be hurt, where they will not be mugged, beaten, harassed and right now all of that is in jeopardy and is because as my good friend Joe Borelli said the policies that are being put in place by Democrats at the city the state level and policies that they are trying to bring to the federal level as well and so I appreciate you being here today for me I appreciate it I want you to know that I will always be there for you I'm proud of the work we've done together. You know, I want to just talk about a couple of these policies that we have to really push back on. First of all, the closing of Rikers Island is a mistake. And the mayor brags the lowest prison population since I think World War II, he likes to say. Think about what's happening. They're releasing dangerous people back on the streets. Many have extensive criminal records and history. Those very policies were snuck into the HEROES Act that they passed in Washington House. They voted to release people who are convicted of crimes, not accused, convicted of crimes from federal prisons, including murderers and rapists over the age of 50. That is not a policy that should ever take place in the United States. Then you look at the bail reform. Our candidate for vice president bragging about the need to eliminate bail in a recent tweet. My opponent, Max Rose, not only supports Rikers Island, uh, but also indicated that he supports the elimination of bail. Of course, they're all trying to backtrack now after they saw the outrage from the public. You know, we all worked very hard after the Democrats and the governor passed that law in Albany, and it passed under one party rule. Make no mistake about it. We don't want to make it political, Republicans versus Democrats, but when only Democrats vote for it, then that's just a fact. That bail law was ridiculous, so ridiculous, we had to spend seven months, seven months to fight back, to get homicide, manslaughter, felony drug charges, strangulation. Think about domestic violence victims, strangulation. We're gonna release them right back onto the street to possibly kill that victim. All those crimes I just mentioned, released right back onto the street until we all fought and said, absolutely not, we're not gonna accept this. And they added those crimes back onto the list in which a judge can use discretion. <laughs> it didn't go far enough, and we need people like Michael Tenusis and Mike Riley to now try to kick the football a little further and make some more fixes. But think about the battles that we're fighting today when we have to fight seven months for something like so common sense that you shouldn't allow people who commit homicide back onto the streets. That's what we are up against. And the day, by the way, that we got that done and that law took effect in early July, on this side, the city council was voting to defund the police. Get one success, and then we have another problem on the other hand. And that's the problem. We have too many battles to fight, and we don't have enough people. And that's why we need to elect more people with common sense who are going to stand with us 
and push back against these horrible policies that are making us less safe. I'm proud to stand with all of you. Proud we had six rallies, marches in support of our NYPD. I'm proud, I made five out of the six. I was at five of the six of those rallies to stand with you, to march with you, to say that I support you and I appreciate you. And I'm so glad to see the turnout that we received on both Staten Island and in Southern Brooklyn for those marches in support of you. Now, while I was doing that, my opponent was marching in front of the 122 with signs that said, defund the police. Signs that said, blue lives murder. And some other things I don't want to repeat. That's the difference in this election. All those policies I've mentioned, my opponent is on record supporting. And I'm sorry, Max Rose, you cannot support closing Rikers, vote to rele release prisoners, support sanctuary policies that keep criminals, that defend them and protect them, support amnesty for gang members, can't support the bail reform law that was a total disaster, and you can't march with the defund the police crowd and be reelected in this congressional district. <laughs> and that's the message I need each and every one of you to take to the people in this community today, tomorrow, and for the next 45 days. We need, we need you. We cannot, look what happened in 2018. No one thought we would lose this seat. Nobody. We lost the seat because people got comfortable. People said, oh, it's Danny. Danny's been around for a long time. He's going to win. After all, Max Rose just moved here to run for office. No one knew who he was. We underestimated him. We still don't know who he is, quite frankly. As a matter of fact, he ran as a moderate. Now he's going and voting in lockstep with Nancy Pelosi and the Socialist Squad. Says he supports the police, doesn't support any policies that support the police, marches with the defund the police crowd, doesn't show up to any of the rallies to show support. So this is somebody who we, I think the people of Staten Island and Brooklyn are being exposed to now and understanding a little more that everything he said, he did the exact opposite once he got to Washington. But we need to get our message out. And it's so critically important that you work between now and election day, talking with people. And I tell you, we have a lot of support out there. I, I've been walking door to door in every part of this district and people bring it up to me, public safety a lot. It really is the biggest concern they have. Because if we're not safe, we have nothing. Businesses aren't going to want to come here. We'll lose more jobs. Families won't want to stay here. They won't be able to raise their children in a safe environment. If we are not safe, we have nothing as a city or a nation. So I ask all of you to do whatever you can do. Today, Taylor, where's Taylor? Taylor's going to be in the front. Amanda, where's Amanda, my campaign manager? She's going to be in the front. Lily, over here, she'll be in the front. They'll have packets for you. We ask you, and I, I don't ask you, by the way, to do anything that I don't do myself. I never ask my volunteers to do anything I don't do myself. I make the phone calls. I go door to door. I stand out the supermarket with my literature. Any of those jobs that you're willing to do, please let them know. We really need to get the message out there. We are outspent, right? We rely on grassroots operation here. We're not paying people. Uh, we don't have the Pelosi Soros money that my opponent does uh, to, to run all these TV ads. We're doing the best we can, and I think we're doing a hell of a job considering we're outspent and out, perhaps numbered because of uh, we're relying on the grassroots operation. But we're not going to be outworked. And that's why I need every single one of you out there today. So thank you for what you do for this city. Thank you for what you do for our nation. Thank you for doing this job under incredibly difficult circumstances. And know that as long as I'm in office, you will always have a friend 
someone that will have your back just as you have mine in this election. Thank you, everyone, and God bless you. All right, everyone, that ends it for today. As Nicole said, if you want to make your way back around to the front, uh, if you want to, in fact, I want to do one thing, and Paul DiGiacomo suggested it. One more thing. I want you to just bow your heads, and we're going to take a moment of silence for some of our recent police officers who have been killed in the line of duty. But when you bow your head, I want you to also reflect on you have an opportunity later to make a little bit of action to send someone who's pro-police to the House of Representatives. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you guys, and I hope you're all inspired to take some action. Thank you.